All right, it's that time of year where Cody makes his his yearly return to the community, man. So let's see what's going on. He says VV is back. Why 2024 is the year of NFTs. Okay, okay. Looks like he's hoping that his bags go back up. I think he paid like, what, 50 bands for, for the Spider-Man. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're at right now, but they're probably not that. But yeah, he bought two at that price, I believe. And um, let's see. Let's see if he's, he's going to be, you know, standing behind his bags, his purchases. Let's see what's happening. VV NFTs are about to explode in 2024. And I hope you guys have been paying attention to what's been going on these last several years because I am excited and I hope you're excited too. And I just remember back in 2021, 2022 maybe was right when it crashed, beginning of 2022. Um, I remember there were people that were cashing out of their collectibles and they would post on Twitter and they would say, look, I made 30 grand, this is life changing money. And I was telling them, no, that's not life changing money. And everybody was like, that is life changing money. You're ungrateful. We're not all as rich as you are. You know, you're, you're born rich, your family's rich, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, if you know me, my family's not rich. They're actually, in my mind, poor, but to most people, just middle class. They're not rich by any means, though. It's quite sad how you know, my dad has to work in, into his 50s and really looks for no solutions to that. But anyways, I digress. That's crazy. I mean, if your dad was in your life, that's a crazy statement. Your dad has to work into his 50s and looks for no solutions to that. Why are you judging your pops like that? Like, did he do a good job raising you? Obviously, you got a decent mindset to go out and figure out ways to do it. But when your dad was coming up, it was a different time. It was a different world. And it was not the amount of opportunity that may be out there today. So, yeah, for somebody to be stuck in their ways after 50 years of raising an ungrateful son, it would seem like. I mean, it was, come on now. Like, that was wild. But, okay, okay, listen. I'm going to be nice. Like, none of my business. None of my business how you treat your family or none of that. Grass, these people are telling me that, um, that that's not life-changing money. Well, here's what I would tell you. And I knew this day would come, and I'm gonna say it to y'all. Those people that got their 30,000, their 50,000, their $100,000 in 2021, where are they at now, bro? They sold their NFTs, they got cash. They probably burned through the fucking cash. Honestly, they probably burned through the cash and have- I mean, y'all burned through y'all cash too. <laughs> y'all just didn't get to burn through it yourselves. Vivi burned through that. <laughs> like, what do you mean? And the, the narrative that this stuff is about to go back up and skyrocket, back when this stuff started going down in value, there was a fraction of the amount of stuff that's on VV um, then as it is today. So in terms of liquidity, why would the liquidity all go towards the assets y'all was holding back then when there's been tons and tons of new assets added onto VV? So, I mean... You can argue the, you can have the confidence that, oh, it's going to go back. It's going to go up. It's going to explode. This is our year. But where's the proof of that? I mean, if it happens, I'll be happy for you all. And that's good. Like, I'd be like, y'all definitely saw something that I didn't see. But I believe that there's too many assets for most of these assets to ever get back to where they once was. And then they only got to where they were before because of manipulation in the first place. Now, it's not that type of clear sight that, that these collectibles should be valued as high as they were back then. First off, there's no there's no metaverse. All of the stuff that we thought was going to drive more value to these collectibles, it turns out the real Ready Player One is here. Disney has already partnered with Fortnite to create their metaverse. It's like the best we can really hope for for Vivi is to get their collectibles partnered with some of these other projects as well. But at the end of the day, I'm not seeing how we get back to these insane prices where this guy is saying, oh, $30,000 is not a lot of money when, I mean, whether people burn through it or not, at least they had the money to burn through, like, Y'all assets just been sitting here depreciating this whole time. So, hey. I have nothing to show for it. Maybe they bought a new truck in 2021. Okay, cool. So now they have a car. Is that life changing? Absolutely not, man. Absolutely not. I'm it could have been if somebody got a car and used that car to go to work and get up off their ass and go and make some money. That was life changing. Life changing means changes your life, changes the current situation that you're in. So if you get $2,000, you invest in a used car, you're able to pay down some debt, and now you can get to work and, and do, that, that was life changing for somebody. So obviously it's not retirement money, but you know, you, 
you don't get to decide what someone's life should be. What's life changing for one person may not be life changing for you because you want a bigger, grander life. I mean, you you just you, you, you I mean, you just judged your own father. You, you're literally just a judgmental dick. So why would I be surprised that you're judging everyone else? But hey, it'd be like that. I'm telling you right now, it takes a lot more than that to change your life. The value in these NFTs is not necessarily buying them, riding them to the top and cashing out. It's more so the networking, the people that you can become friends with through owning the NFT. If you reach out to me right now and you show me that you bought my NFT that I created back when VV was crushing it, I will instantly give you my phone number, instantly become best friends, instantly just mentor you because you believed in me. If you show me that you own a secret of Spider-Man, I'm gonna know you're the real deal, right? And over the past year, last summer, I went out, I bought a Lambo. Three. So it's okay for it to be, for the investment itself, or for the NFT to be shit, but because you meet cool people, I mean, <laughs> this is a argument. <laughs> and I, I like I like what you're saying. Like personally, I'll be honest with you. I've seen your videos. I've seen the things that you've said personally to about me and things like that. I personally just believe that you're a dick. But I do believe that if you are offering these benefits to people who bought your shitty NFTs and you are in a level where you can help these people, power to you, power to them. And that's a great thing to be offering. And looking at it from this perspective and taking this positive approach to a negative situation, this is probably the best that you could probably hope for in, in, with, with this situation. So I do commend you for this perspective and this point of view. I, I definitely have to do that. $300,000 for a fucking car. Do you think I bought that car so that I could drive it from point A to point B? No. I bought the car so that I could post a picture of me with the car on Instagram. And when people message me, they know that I'm legit. It's the same concept with these NFTs. And the big catalyst for all of this is the fact that Bitcoin is back. Now the problem with Bitcoin being back is... Bitcoin isn't a catalyst for anything. It's, it's not like, it's not a, like, it's, a, it's completely unconnected from VV and the whole entire ecosystem. The ecosystem of VV is completely enclosed as far as the token side and as far as the nft side like what is the value of getting the nfts how's the money going to come from bitcoin and why would anyone put it into the nfts and collectibles like where's the correlation we all missed it unless you have bitcoin then kudos to you you made a lot of money congrats but bitcoin's not gonna 10x it's not gonna 100x it already did most of its growth over the past several months and it will still grow and it's gonna be fun to root for it and watch it go up but you don't need to own the Bitcoin to benefit from Bitcoin's boom. Because what's gonna happen is, all those people that had Bitcoin that just turned two grand into 20 grand, or maybe they turned 200 grand into a million, what they're gonna do is they're gonna to look to put that million dollars somewhere else. And they're gonna- And it's gonna be VV. It's gonna be, you have Ready Player One, you have Fortnite who has all of VV's assets by the way, and they can actually be used and you can do things with them. They're gonna look past all the projects. Like they have AVEX out here. AVEX has multiple games and multiple different, it's a lot of different places to put your money at, but they're gonna look at VV. Why? Why the, 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 the VV community doesn't even, barely wants to look at VV. They're just stuck in VV. You're gonna realize, hey, this is fun, but this isn't that exciting anymore. Bitcoin's already blown up. Now, at the time I record this, I understand Bitcoin still has a lot of room to move, but what I'm saying is once Bitcoin really gets to 100K, 150K, people are gonna look at it and be like, all right, the odds of it doubling again are a lot lower than Secret Rare Spider-Man that might be at eight grand. And we have seen Secret Rare Spider-Man hit 109 grand. It Through manipulation. Don't like, you gotta add context to the things you say. Through manipulation. The market was heavily manipulated at the time where it hit 100 grand. It's so crucial that it hit 109 grand at one point. There's one person, and you could say he's the most unlucky person who ever bought that Secret of Spider-Man 109 grand, but the reality is there's a human out there that paid 109 grand for a Secret of Spider-Man, which will give people a ton of confidence as they invest in Secret of Spider-Man at nine grand, at 25 grand, at 50 grand, because they know that in 2021, it was right here. Basically, he need he basically he need to get back to fifty grand. <laughs> he need to get that back to fifty grand, bro. Like, <laughs> hey, 
I feel you, bro. Like, go ahead, campaign. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> I respect it. Meaning in 2024, it's going to here. Like, this is the... Like, this is the speculation that people do when they have no idea what they're talking about. they like, well, it hit 100K before. Let's add no context into why that was possible. So it, it can at least get half of that, right? Like, it's like, bro, that that's how much you've grown as an investor this whole time? Like, you that that's your logic still? Oh, that's like me when I first jumped into the project. Dogecoin just blew up for no reason. It popped off. So, of course, this token is going to blow up, too. Let's talk about Dogecoin being on like what 500 exchanges or something and VV being on three <laughs> minus one. Like, it's, I mean, I don't know, bro. It's a lot of context missing in this. Like, this is why these videos is kind of crazy where it's just one sided people trying to push a narrative because it, it's just, yeah. Anyway, it, it feels great to not be one of those content creators who has a narrative to spend these days. Like, I, I'm not I'm no longer and, and people I don't think people do it purposely I don't think people know that they're trying to do it for themselves and hope that things go okay I think that people genuinely just think that they're sharing their beliefs but don't realize how, un, how unrealistic their beliefs is because I was one of those people I was I was given a lot of unrealistic beliefs and and explaining why the unrealistic was realistic like I heard I heard my man's Randy in a, in a chat the other day talking about how um tesla people a few people got bad teslas and stuff like that and it was so motivational and inspiring at first listen like he's right you know people bought teslas and it went bad for some people so they'll never touch tesla again but then when you put it into the context that vv is being compared to tesla when they can't even dominate their own lane anymore like more companies more and more companies getting ip every day they're not the king of that metaverses <laughs> oh my god they're not even in the conversation it's like what conversation is Vivi actually in outside of having the oldest NFT community who has some of the first appearances of things? But anyway, I digress. Which might be 150 grand, it might be 200 grand, it doesn't matter, but it's gonna go back up. Now I will say, and I do want to warn you guys, the random knickknacks and patty wax on Vivi, the random NFTs like the Groot, uh, like, I don't know, pick a random NFT, the Lambo, um, the Mojo Jojo, that shit is not gonna ever really do much for you. It's fun to collect, I guess, if that if you enjoy that, but it's really just- Yeah, cause Cody is the only one who knows what is really going to be valuable to you. And basically what's gonna be valuable to you is getting his Spider-Man back, <laughs> back up to 50K. <laughs> you gotta get, hey, you gotta get him his exit liquidity, bro. Like this is crazy. Like basically, he he need exit liquidity is what is what he's trying to say. Like <laughs> at least that's my interpretation. Cause this is this is crazy. He's saying a lot of words just to say that. Listen, everything that you collected is stop immediately. Just put all your money in the secret rest Spider Man so I can get out. <laughs> hey, junk. And I got caught up in that a little bit, but I really put ninety five percent of my VV investment into secret Spider Man. And I didn't really mess around with anything else. Now I could definitely argue that the partner statue is probably better, a better investment money-wise than Secret Rare Spider-Man, because I think once they get to a point, I don't think Secret Rare Spider-Man could maintain that two-to-one advantage over the the um, golden statue. But at the same time, Secret Rare Spider-Man is always going to be the number one grail on Vivi. It's the first Disney NFT. It's the first Marvel NFT. It's Spider-Man who is like the holy grail of comic books and of superheroes. It's the best superhero by far, best superhero movies of the early 2000s by far. I'm talking Peter Parker, not this Miles Morales bullshit. It's fun, it's a good movie, Miles Morales, shout out to him. But we all know the real Spider-Man is Peter Parker. He's a great salesman, I'll give him that. Like, this is why he's successful. <laughs> this is why he's an amazing sales pitch. But I mean, the, 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 the tough part about being a salesman in a sales pitch is that usually there's no one stopping your flow and calling you out on your bullshit because because you're usually selling, uh, uh, you know. But listen, when you really just take the time to hear the foolishness that's being said, it's like, ah, I mean, it sounded good. It would sound good without any interruption. But we got to stop that. We got to stop the nonsense there like sometimes, you know. But anyway, and the people with big money 
way bigger money than me that don't have YouTube channels that drive a Toyota Camry and they live under the radar and they don't. They live in under the radar to buy shit on VV that. Listen, I, I want to know how he spends this to these people buying shit from VV. <laughs> like, like this is this is this is crazy. Like this man, been, this man been taking taking notes from Randy. Like all my well friends buying. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. No, this is kind of funny. <laughs> Don't show you how much they have. Those people that have tens of millions, they like Peter Parker. Miles Morales has his demographic too, but it ain't. That's what Peter Parker they would like more. One that's on Fortnite that their kid can use to play the game with. And they can still hold some value like that. That's probably something that they would be a lot more interested in than VVs who you can take take a picture with. A, a fake picture with. Yeah. Ain't the fucking 10 million plus club. You know what I'm saying? It's just not. So the secret of Spider-Man is the key here. And that's what you need to make sure that you <laughs> are. the secret of Spider-Man is the key. Bro, you don't need it to go up that damn bad, bro. Like, hey, you gotta chill, bro. This wasn't supposed to be a comedy, but I'm glad I watched this video. I was finna just ignore this shit. I was finna ignore this shit and go about my day. But, yo, know, this was the best decision I made. <laughs> own. And I understand the buy-in is quite high. Now, I have a ton of confidence because all this shit went to zero. Like Dogecoin, Bitcoin, all the crypto, all the NFTs just went to fucking zero over the last couple years. Secret Rare Spider-Man, I've been keeping an eye on it. It really hasn't gone below five grand. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I don't check it every day. Some of y'all might. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but every time I check, it's around like six to 10 grand, which is a pretty good chunk of money. The average human isn't gonna just go throw that down on a digital collectible. It sound good, but it, anyway, most of the people who's holding it, like the reason that it don't go down too far is because people would actually buy. If you put it down to like a uh, thousand dollars or two hundred dollars, some people would buy. So that means people like you who spend fifty thousand on it, the the more you all start to lower the price on that, the more people will start to buy it at those lower prices, which then becomes the new value of it. So. Y'all are stuck holding. All of you are stuck holding. Like, it sound good to say, oh, even Bitcoin went down, but this didn't go down. <laughs> Yo, it sounds good. It, it, it definitely sounds great. It, it, sound, it sounds great. But I'm just feeling really good about Vivi. I'm feeling really good about life. I wanted to check in with you guys, probably come back and make some videos like this. Um, I'm just kind of bored with what I'm doing. Not necessarily bored, but you know, I'm kind of on cruise control. I've been printing a lot of money on the internet. I had uh, one month where I peaked at 380 grand, which is insane. Like five, 10 years ago when I was watching Gary Vee and Ty Lopez and Grant Cardone and all those guys on YouTube. Grant he said, oh, I'm, I'm oh so rich now. I just need to go back to VV. Like, bro, you trying to, you, you are campaigning for this 50K to go back up. If you making money like that, bro, like that's, this is wild. Like th this is this is wild right here. I'm letting you know. Like, oh, I'm just making these videos because I'm bored, not because I'm looking out for my own self interest and need the 50k I put in or 100k I put in. Like, it's not that at all. Like, all right, let me chill. <laughs> I'm Stefan. Uh, in his early days, Tanner J. Fox, who it doesn't even make videos anymore. I just dreamt of making like five grand a month on the internet. That was like my dream. That was to me what would change my life. And to be able to farm this much money out of the internet now is just crazy. And I kind of want to just make videos like this where I just talk about shit that I like. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm talking about VV because it doesn't get a lot of views. The VV community is strong. And that's something, that's something that gives me confidence in VV too. So this video is kind of like just things that give me confidence in secret. So basically you're trying to win over the VV audience by kissing their ass and blowing sunshine up their ass, letting them understand why everyone is going to come and buy the secret rare Spider-Man. <laughs> Yo, hey, when are y'all influencers going to learn or when are y'all influencers going to learn that just kissing people ass ain't going to give you longevity? People been plotting on my downfall for how long and I'm still around because people know, regardless of if they've agreed with decisions, if I've been right, if I've been wrong, people know that I'm honest and I always tell it how I see it everyone ain't dumb enough to always agree with me everyone doesn't always disagree with me people are just people watch me because they know that i have integrity 
a lot of y'all come here with no integrity just really campaigning for one side and you think that that's like when i was campaigning for one side i was just fully uneducated and certain things had not been proven at that point in time so i had every right to be delusional it's like a lot of you all campaigning for certain things y'all should be smarter y'all should know certain things like the way that some of y'all are moving like like i think randy gets a pass because he's like he genuinely believes in, and, and he comes across as if he genuinely believes it, and he's putting all his money behind it showing that he believes in this so regardless of if he's right or wrong that's true conviction so he, he gets a pass he gets some longevity in a pass for being the super bowl because he he is he, he is a, more of a believer than all of us but stuff like this is just like this is a move to get you some views to post what you really want to post and I mean, power to you, but at least come and be honest. Like, this is crazy. We're Spider-Man and Vivi. But I was on a stream with Randy Chavez about a week ago, and I was on there with another guy. I think it was Dr. Prophet, but I honestly forget. But he was one of the guys that's real big into Vivi. And man, his tone had completely shifted from when I had seen him a couple years ago. He was so frustrated with the project. He was getting out, he was selling most of his stuff. Hey, you're not talking about Dr. Prophet. <laughs> Dr. Prophet is in too deep for that shit. <laughs> Yo, you <laughs> listen, allegedly, <laughs> it's just my opinion. You, you're you probably talking about Pags. You, you, you're talking about Pags, bro. Like, because he's the he's the open well uh, getting out of VV right now. <laughs> hey, and I'm not trying to laugh at people's struggles and stuff like that, man. It, it's just. Bro, y'all, like the thing is, y'all can get yourselves in this hot water over leveraging yourselves and putting yourself in, into a project this deep. And you don't want to educate people and warn them and, and help people learn from the mistakes that you've made. You don't want people to improve based on, you know, some of the things that you know now that maybe you didn't know at the time you were making some of these decisions. Like, that's what I don't like about certain people. I don't like the, the characteristic to keep dragging people down with you, keep people on this train with you. It's like, and I don't want people to get off the train. I'm not knocking people off the train or anything like that. I'm saying, yo, this this train, it could come to a it could come to a to a crazy crash. So you know, hold on tight. Put the seatbelt on. Put get all tight. Put a bubble suit on just in case this bit, just in case it crash. The bubble suit gonna gonna expand if it hits something. Like I'm telling people, be safe. Get that to protect yourself. Get that to protect yourself. I'm not telling nobody to get off the train. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling anyone to leave. Never have. I'm saying that I'm sticking it out. I'm gonna be on the train, but I'm gonna be well prepared on it too. It's like I'm already. I, listen, I'm y'all on the train. I'm swinging off the back of it with a parachute on already. I'm just swinging, watching what's going on. You know, I, I'm looking around the train to see if I can see what's up ahead. Like that's me right now. While everybody else is on the train having parties, drinking, intoxicated, not not even in a position to judge what's going on. It's like, hey. Power to y'all, but nah, no, 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 no. I can't be that comfortable on this train. And I was just thinking, dude, you know, did you really come this far just to come this far? You're going to tap out now? Vivi came this far just to come this far. Vivi came this far with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, fundamentals just to change at that point. It's like a lot has changed. A lot has happened. And yes, people can decide that they've come this far just to come this far because the company that they invested in before that made them come this far is no longer the same company that exists today. So you can't judge somebody for coming this far when everything that they were sold on has changed. I don't know why you tap out. Just ride it out. Either die on your sword or keep riding it out till it comes back. But You're in a position where you have to die on your sword though. Like you you invested, you invested like what, 100K? And th that's down to what, less than 20K right now? You have to ride it out. You have to. It's like, at, the, at, at in your position, it's no point in taking out 20K, right? Like what is the point? And, and with VV's fees, by the, by the time you take out that 20K, what you left with, you left like 11K? After VV's fees? Bro, you could sell, and it's not even 20K, so it's probably less than that. If it's 18, then it go down to what? You, you, can, you can get out this project with 9K? You went from 100K to 9K. You have to ride it out. But you can't, like, this is what I mean by preaching the wrong stuff to people. In my opinion, it's the wrong stuff because people who in a position where they're stuck sit here and tell everybody else, like, oh, you shouldn't even be considering jumping out. It's like, 
Bro, it should be a consideration if you're in a position where it makes sense for you to. Now, if you're down 95%, <laughs> then you might as well sit that out. Like, bro, if you invested $100 and you got $10 left, hey, why are you putting out that $10, bro? Just just leave it there and forget about it, man. Like, you, you're you stuck. Like, like let, it, <laughs> let it happen at this point. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, bro, come on now. You have to stay. But you have to look at the landscape of NFTs, digital collectibles, like... It's, there's going to be a day where all this shit pops off and it becomes common knowledge. And it might be when Gen Z becomes 30 or 40 years old. It might be a little while, right? But yeah, it's going to be that day because they're going to start going for VV NFTs instead of what Fortnite's about to be working on with Disney and what um, Ready Player One is about to be building with the Oasis and all their IPs. <laughs> they're definitely going to overlook those projects and they're going to go straight to VV. Yeah, I don't think the that that people are going to care about what came first. People are going to care about what gives them the most value, what's the most fun, what 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 gives them the most happiness, what gives them the best escape. Like the whole financial system is about to crash. Like things are changing in the world completely. And you think that holding something just because it came first is going to be at the top of people's list? No, people are going to want to escape. They're going to want games. They're going to want to have fun. They're going to wait want new ways to connect with their friends. Vivi's assets aren't even affordable. Like, yeah, maybe a bunch of whales who stuck in together can buy from each other and pump things to one another, but that's about it. Like, what, what else comes with Vivi? What comes for the user? What's the benefit of holding for the average mass user? Not much, right? Like, eventually these NFTs are gonna take over again, and it'll be fun if it happens soon, but whatever, the day is coming, right? It might come in five years, 10 years, who knows? But when that day comes, Vivi has such a beautiful marketplace. You can't get scammed, you can't get robbed, you can't click a wrong link on the internet and get your crypto uh, wallet robbed dry. It's a closed market that provides a layer of safety. And then these guys that run Vivi, they've gone out and they've gotten the most powerful brands in the world. Like I bought my Lambo and I was like, damn, this is nuts. I love Lambo. Oh, you always, everybody loves Lambo, but when you buy it. All right, y'all, we're going to end it here. I mean, it's really just more VV glaze. Yeah, I mean, needless to say, I don't disagree with the potential success that VV can have. I disagree with a lot of what he's saying. Like, he doesn't know what he's talking about at all. Um, he's just basically pumping what he cares about, what he values, and he's trying to get an audience to whatever project he has going on. Um, which I'm not mad at him trying to get an audience. I just wish people would do things more in more of a genuine way. Um, but integrity is not big around here, I guess. But it is what it is. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out Cody Thrive. That's his YouTube channel, Cody Thrive. Go show him some love. If you support him, if you like what, he, what you heard here, make sure you go show him some love. Listen, I want everybody to have the audience that is for them. If you support certain things and you, you, you find... Listen, I don't gatekeep nothing. Like all the dickheads can be together. All the, like everybody can like be where you belong. Like, <laughs> but yo, that's pretty much it, y'all. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one. <laughs> Peace out, yo.